Hello everyone and welcome back to Ian Bailey Magic, the YouTube channel all about the magic of Ian Bailey. Uh, today we're going to be looking at what I carry in my pockets as an electrician. That's weird, isn't it? Let's have a look. So I want to thank you all for watching these videos. Um, please hit the like button, the subscribe button, the notification bell as well, because you never know when I'm going to release a video because it's never consistent. Uh, but you will be notified and you'll be able to sleep at night knowing that you finally watched one of my videos. Uh, today, we are going to be looking at what I carry as a tradesman. Uh, you may be thinking, Ian, I thought your job was a magician. I thought you made your living out of magic. No, I do not. And, uh, and I'm happy that I don't. I think a lot of people um, really aim to be a full-time performer. They think that that is the goal of every magician. And for me, I tried it for a bit, but the, the lifestyle just didn't suit me. I prefer structure in my day. I like knowing that I'm out between this time and this time and the evening is free. Um, and actually I feel that having a day job just releases the pressure to invent magic tricks to earn a living and to take gigs that I don't necessarily want to take just so that I can earn a living. So um, it's nice me having a normal job first, you know, and having the magic as a nice little bonus. Um, but you may be a uh, tradesman out there, you may be an electrician, a plumber, a, a, a carpenter, anything, um, or you may just like the odd job and helping out people and um, and the magic of kind of Jay Sankey and other people using ordinary objects really appeals to you as it does for me. And so you will love this, uh, this video where I'm gonna be talking about maybe 10, 12 tricks, I'm not sure how many, I haven't really decided yet, of all the tricks I like to carry on my person in my pockets or in a little case and uh, perform for customers when I'm doing jobs. So let's have a look at what we've got. So this first item is brass buttons and this is not uh, in any particular order, this list, uh, but this is a trick that um, I will say I've played around with. For me, I haven't really managed to find any routines that really kind of grip me. Uh, it's nothing against uh, Matthew Wright or any of the people on the project. There's tons and tons of routines out there. I'm sure something will suit you. Uh, but you know when you, you pick up a trick and you're just thinking this isn't clicking with me personally, um, but I would still really recommend it to others, especially if you like this kind of copper silver brass routine. Um, but it is essentially a copper silver brass, but you have a poker chip or kind of like a championship coin Apparently you're meant to put those on the cards to protect people from nicking your cards during a game or something. I don't know how rough your poker games are if you need to protect your cards. I'm probably revealing that I don't know much about poker. But anyway, that is a, a kind of a heavy poker chip, let's just call that. Um, a very heavy washer. Not particularly realistic for people on the trade, but... Um, you know, well, certainly not in my kind of line of work, uh, a metal button, and then you've got another kind of a coin poker chip that is also allows for the routine to happen. It's a gimmicked poker chip is what it is. Um, really good routines. Like I say, there's lots of different things for everyone on there, um, but I would say it's, it's good for tradesmen because you can talk about how your poker chip uh, reminds you of your kind of magic career, your washer reminds you of your engineering and the button, um, you just need a button because your trousers fell down or something like that. Uh, but the, the kind of washer is really what I'm getting at with the, uh, the mechanical and electrical kind of environment. I would recommend checking out brass buttons. I'm not going to be doing many performances on this video. I just kind of want to curate a list of things that I like and then it's up to you to then go away and look at the trailers and uh, go and have a look at the performances. But that is Brass Buttons by Matthew Wright. This next trick is called Mental Colour by Spooky Nyman. That's Preston Nyman's kind of uh, name, you know, alter ego for... Uh, um, for, for magic stuff. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is this is a, an interesting um, kind of paint divination routine, color divination routine. It uses these five cards, uh, well, four cards, sorry. And it basically, you get someone to think of one of the colors and you see how popular their decision, their kind of color choice is by just going through and they tell you whether their color is on the uh, card or not. And then by kind of working out what, 
colours, what cards they've said yes to and no to, you know exactly what colour they're thinking of. It's a great little routine. I quite like the kind of the Abbott's paints design. It's kind of quite old school. Um, and yeah, it's quite a charming little trick. Uh, there is another version which I would also recommend uh, called Gradient by Adam Dadswell. I think there's a lot more you can do with Adam Dadswell routine. Um, I will do a routine, a kind of a review of different colour tricks coming up soon. If you do want me to do that, let me know in the comments below and depending on how many votes, I'll, I'll go ahead and do it. Uh, because there also is a colour trick coming out by Rich Relish as well with Murphy's. So it'd be good to kind of do a comparison video between this gradient and, um, you know, Rich Relish's routine. I'm not sure on the name yet because it hasn't been released. Uh, but yeah, really nice. You know, the colour, the painting, uh, paint shop design really suits me as a, you know, a tradesman in general. And so if you're looking for a colour divination, I recommend this as well as Gradient by Adam Dadswell. This next trick is called Swindle by Steve Cook. This was released with Alakazam. And what I've done is I basically, rather than using mint tins, I use it with little toolboxes. And um, basically the premise is you get someone to choose one of the boxes and the one that they choose has a piece of paper in and um, they open it up and it says, this is the box you'll end up with. And they think, all oh, right, that's great. Does the other one have that? And then they open up the other one and the other one actually has 20 pounds in. So the one that they chose is always the one that doesn't have the 20 pounds in. Um, it's a really nice little routine. It's very clever thinking by Steve Cook. And yeah, I would really recommend picking that up and using these little toolboxes, which I will put the link in the comments down below. Uh, but yeah, it just makes it you know, electrician or tradesman themed when it's actually the same trick. Uh, so really good as a parlor piece, I think, if you're gonna carry little toolboxes around, I think you won't really carry these in your pocket, but for a nice kind of set performance for your friends at work, I recommend Swindle by Steve Cook. This next one uh, was a bit of a strange purchase for me actually, and this was by Leo Smetzers. Um, I will put the, the name of the trick up um, in the, um, on the video basically but um, this is a three shell game that uses these little hard hats it's quite sweet isn't it uh, they're very cute but it's a three shell game and uses these and yeah I just think it's quite a, a quirky um, kind of you know routine once again tradesman themed uh, you know, is it something you carry in your pockets? Not necessarily. It makes you look like you're either quite strange or just very, very prepared for someone to ask you for a magic trick. Um, but yeah, really, really recommend this. Um, I haven't used it much, to be honest with you. Um, it does come in this little bucket, um, but uh, I think it's called the Workers Three Shell Game. I think that's correct. But yeah, I'll put the price and everything up in there below. Um, but yeah, really nice little trick. And um, if you love a three shell game, pick one up. This next one is the Charming Chinese Challenge by Troy Hooza. However, what I do is I perform it with washers rather than the Chinese coins. So I still have a piece of ribbon. I feel like I've, tr I've tried different um, you know, materials uh, to perform with. However, I think still doing it with ribbon is is better it just makes the handling a lot easier but doing it with washers makes it more every day and so i really recommend performing that you just yeah pick up your piece of ribbon from the kit i would recommend downloading his ex instructions for charming chinese challenge uh, but yeah do it with the washers and you'll you'll thank me later it looks more ordinary and every day as opposed to these kind of ornate chinese coins Sticking with the washer theme, I would highly recommend Holy Moly by Jay Sankey. This for me is my favorite moving hole effect. Jay Sankey is a genius for this. Um, many, many years ago, this is probably one of the first tricks I ever purchased uh, as a magician. I just adore this routine and this is always in my pockets. I really, really love the fact that it's using washers obviously, um, but if you combine this as a follow-up to Troy Hooser's Charming Chinese Challenge, it just makes this routine a lot longer, kind of, you know, more established. It's just an absolutely brilliant, 
brilliant routine. Uh, Jay then uh, released Key Deposit. I don't know whether this was before Holy Moly or after Holy Moly, um, but the, he then invented the the notion of then um, you know putting a hole onto a key. As far as I'm concerned, I think that's the that was first, and then you had um, Craig Petty come out with Key Master, and there's a whole host of other things you can do with that. Um, but yeah, for me. Holy moly is just always in my pocket as a tradesman. It's just a phenomenal routine and just seems so impromptu and so everyday and doesn't use up much space whatsoever. This next one is a bit of a strange routine actually for me. It's uh, basically you would have these different, um, you know, nuts that you put in your in your hand and basically you would get someone to hold on to your hand they would hold on to your wrist for example and then you squeeze them or wave a lighter underneath they will turn into one solid object um i, I find this uh, fascinating just as soon as i saw this i was like straight away yeah magic trick this is what you call a stud extender so normally you have a, a long length of uh, rod threaded rod and this would be a way of extending it. So you would put one nut on, screw this on, screw the thread on, and you know, put another nut on and basically lock it in place. Um, so yeah, I like to use this. This is M10, so it's a 10 mil size. And then I also have these nuts here, which are M10 nuts. Um, yeah, just a random idea of mine. It's not a released magic trick per se. Um, but using the pop-up move, you can, you know, and the, and the steel, etc., you can uh, create a nice little routine with that. If you like that routine with nuts, then you'll also love uh, Doc Eason's routine, all screwed up. This is a routine which basically you have three nuts in your hand. You take two of them away, put them in your pocket, and then you still have three. Uh, you repeat this a couple of times, and then suddenly now there's a nut or a bolt, sorry, in your hand. Um, you do it again and then suddenly now you've screwed up and uh, now the nuts are all on the bolt and yeah it's a great kind of uh, random routine using nuts and bolts doesn't use any gimmicks which I love so you can literally just uh, learn the routine pick up some nuts and bolts and you're away um, and yeah it's just a really really nice routine you can also use the the stud extender if you want to follow up with that as well um, but yeah great uh, very much similar to Jay Sankey's kind of washer routines it very much feels the same you know it's just very very uh, organic in a magic or electrical sense um, so really really recommend that routine as well this next one is a lot of fun this is by Adam Wilbur and it's called in case of emergency this is a great uh, kind of fire extinguisher or fire um, alarm case and basically a sign card appears inside this case. So you hand out to someone, you say, we'll get to that in case we need it. It's kind of a fire insurance, if you will, for uh, for this magic trick. And you do your trick and then they pull the emergency pull cord handle um, and then inside is their signed playing card. It's really good. It's a really nice card to box. Very slim, so it's not kind of like a big bulky case. It's slim, and um, yeah, the methodology is is quite good. It was it's not as practical as kind of maybe a couple of other um, versions out there, uh, but it is very very. It is still very practical. It's just um, yeah, you're kind of adding something in as opposed to you know. I don't want to go into too much detail, but um, it's a really really good effect. It really suits my style within this electrical theme, and uh, yeah, that is that is another excellent trick. Going back to the nut theme, Rope Nuts Knot is an excellent routine. I have had a lot of fun with this, performing this on stage. Um, it's great for performing stage, but also table hopping at weddings um, and obviously just on site with your electrician friends. Uses a length of rope. Um, I am a firm believer, I've talked about this in other uh, videos as well. I'm a firm believer in not using the big, big rope if you don't have to, okay? On on stage, I'll use the big rope. Uh, but if I'm doing table hopping, I actually find just having a hoodie cord, uh, you know, that you would find in your, in your hoodie or, uh, you know, kind of round your trousers on joggers, um, that is enough for you to be able to do rope nut knot and to make it very, very, very visual as well. Um, it can still play to a big, big group of people. It's, it's just as visual as the massive rope. So really, really recommend checking out Rope Knot Knot. This is basically a trick where the, the nut gets put onto the rope, you tie a knot around it, and then the nut comes off the rope uh, several times, disappears, reappears on the table. A brilliant, brilliant routine. And uh, yeah, it is definitely in my working set, both stand up and close up. 
sticking sticking with the rope theme uh, fiber optics by richard sanders is an excellent routine and that uses a length of rope uh, but once again if you're performing close up at a wedding i would still recommend just using the hoodie cord um, i know if you're at a wedding you don't necessarily want to be performing too many kind of industrial style effects uh, but you know i'm just talking about in general if you like to perform rope magic then this is great so you can use that um, and yeah do the exact same thing I normally perform rope nut knot and then I go into fiber optics talking about how I magically cut the rope take the nut off and then restore it and so you're straight in from one routine straight into another so it's really really good check out Richard Sanders for that one Another one, uh, which is probably one of the first tricks I ever bought once again, was uh, Jay Sankey's earplugs. Now, he's recently re-released them in white. Um, I think they differ in style and, and size compared to the original ones. I haven't tried out the new ones, so I can't comment on those too much. But uh, the bright yellow uh, standard kind of 3M earplugs are what uh, people use on building sites. And this is what Jay Sankey has mimicked. So you've got these two big earplugs. I really, really like these. I, for me, they make more sense than sponge balls. And uh, I like to ask someone a question and ask it in a way which no one can even understand, let alone hear. So I would say, I would show us some, and they'd go, what? And you'd say, oh, what? let me just reach. You had a earplug there in your ear. That's why you couldn't hear me. Um, and then I go into the routine. So it's, it's very nice to kind of orchestrate a a react like know that they're going to react in a certain way and then you know finish off with this it's really really a lot of fun so uh yeah he has um a set i think of four earplugs um and then also a big jumbo earplug as well that you get as well so um yeah a lot of fun uh and it's just very very visual but also um yeah really good for children and adults alike one thing i forgot to mention before we move on to the uh one of the last tricks here is i combine it with alan wong's fake ear um so i will do my earplug routine and then say actually you know i did that gag one time and accidentally pulled someone's ear off um but obviously that hasn't happened in this case and then move on um it's just a really nice little funny thing to have and um if my ear ever does fall off um, then I've got a backup kind of replacement, if it were. So handy to have for plastic surgery uh, as well. So um, this is an expensive one and one that I've never really used, and that is the self-bending screwdriver set. Um, I think you can buy them as a pack, uh, but basically you have one straight that uh, bends um, and then one bend, bent one that straightens. Um, yeah, very expensive. I haven't really used them only because I find that it may be good for camera and maybe good for stage in a certain way, but you've got to, you've got to perform it to specific people that aren't then actually going to try and straighten it out. Uh, I think you can damage the gimmick by really trying to bend it properly. So I'm a little bit dubious with that, but um, nevertheless, I do own this um and you know we'll we'll see how it goes maybe there might be a time when i perform it for the right person in the right situation uh i would love to be able to do this and then do a screwdriver through arm uh but i that's probably not my style anyway but anyway it's, it's an honorable mention is the self-bending screwdriver set one uh, random one I want to mention is a lot of the time when you're working on a trade, uh, you know, kind of on a building size, a tradesman or a kind of a university where I work, um, you have to wear a lanyard. And I have this lanyard here. Um, actually, in my lecture, I talk about using this as an alternative prop for Unleashed by Greg Wilson, where a dog tag tick comes off the chain and then goes back on via the t-shirt so it kind of melts through the t-shirt onto the dog tag personally i don't suit dog tags and chains so i like to use a lanyard and i do it with a key um, actually the key i use is my key ring effect so i then go into that which is a nice routine but nevertheless if you are in any kind of workplace where you have to wear a lanyard then i thoroughly recommend having your lanyard getting a spare one okay several spare ones okay and uh, using a tt you can do a cut and restored lanyard trick so you pull it out cut it and then restore it um, i always went on when i'm working on a building site i carry a uh, you know a, 
multi-tool. I don't know if I can get that word out, but Victorian Ox multi-tool. This is the Super Tinker Deluxe, if you're interested in that. In fact, if you are a tradesman and you want to know what I carry outside of the magic world, um, then do check out my other video. I'll put a link in the description below. And that is uh, a link for my Ian's EDC channel, where I talk about EDC gadgets that aren't magic related. So uh, if that's of news, if that's of interest to you, then uh, then do check that out. But a lanyard with a TT will allow you to do a cut and restored lanyard, which feels very impromptu and organic. So do check that out as well. And now we're towards the end of my uh, little kind of video here. I hope you've been enjoying it. And these are a couple of my own products, actually. Funny enough, isn't that weird? Um, but I know a lot of you out there love Turbo Stick by Richard Sanders and Leo Smetzer. So they released that together. Very, very visual routine, excellent routine. However, the only issue is for me is that the prop just doesn't look right for me, right? Having a whiteboard paddle, um, it's just, it screams magic prop and, and doesn't kind of feel very, you know, impromptu. I wanted to do it where I could do it at work and, uh, and you know, at a gig and not be kind of looked at as, as crazy. This is my alternative and this is what I call paddle pencils. And these paddle pencils are basically um, carpentry pencils and I've managed to source them so that they don't have any logo on and it allows you to basically, uh, yeah, perform the whole routine without the strange prop. So uh, I really recommend checking out that way you can rub it off and uh, and then throw it back on, etc. Uh, but yeah, I, I put them up. You buy a pack of two, so you get two paddle pencils. Um, and then also a marker with a rubber on as well. So it allows you to rub them off and, you know, as, so you're not getting them on your hand. Uh, but yeah, it basically is a, a white pencil, carpentry pencil, so it's nice and flat. Wonderful doing the paddle move with, by the way. Uh, but also you get the it kind of, a, it's in a white boardy texture, which allows you to kind of mark and rub off uh, and doesn't have a logo. So they were very hard to find. I managed to buy it, bulk buy them. You get two of them and a pen for like 4 dollars Very, very cheap. Uh, so do check out my website for those. Last but not least is this effect, which I released with Alakazam, and this is called Measure for Measure. This was a routine that I brought out actually during COVID. Um, not many people could release magic tricks during COVID because they had no, no one to perform to. However, I did. I was still working during COVID, uh, thankfully, at a film studio. And um, this basically is a tape measure. And the tape measure is a standard sta uh, tape measure, standy tape measure. But what this allows you to do is as you pull it out, you ask someone, you say, I'm going to influence you to stop at a very specific location. So just say stop wherever you want. And they say stop here. Now, bearing in mind, they could go up to eight meters if they want. I put the brake on. I say, look, at that point there, I had said stop just at that moment where you said stop and uh, and there you go. So, um, you know, you're allowed to stop anywhere and it works every single time. So I do recommend checking out Measure for Measure. I've only got a couple left on my website. Um, they are kind of the one of the more expensive items on my site, uh, but do check that out. Go to ianbaileymagic.com for the paddle pencils and Measure for Measure. Um, I hope you've enjoyed all of these effects. Let me know, I'm sure I've forgotten some of them, but I just wanted to share kind of my, the ones that came to mind uh, immediately. But do, uh, yeah, do let me know which ones you love the most, which ones do you perform, and which ones have I forgotten off the list. Uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. And uh, yeah, let me know about this review, whether you would like a, an in-depth review where I'm reviewing this, gradient and rich relishes effects when it comes out uh, I would love to help you guys out with those and if you are a magic creator and you would like your effect reviewed on the show then do get in contact with me what I do and I don't know whether this is unique or not I will only review it if I can see myself performing it or I know I like it um, I won't review something that I don't like I just want to keep this as a upbeat place I don't want to offend anyone uh, but what I want to do is basically rather than reviewing I suppose it's endorsing um, magic tricks that I know that you will love as well um, so yeah my past review uh, was Heideki 
and I did Heideki Plus, uh, if, a kind of a comparison video between Scotch and whiskey and Heideki Plus. And uh, yeah, that got really good reaction from you guys, really good uh, response, I should say. So let me know. Let me know in the comments down below. But thank you so much for watching. Go and visit my website, and I will see you next time.